All right, in this lesson, we're going to give you an overview of the ways that we can estimate bad debt. Up until this point in time, we've given you the number, but now we're gonna teach you how we would calculate it. Now there's two methods that we can use. So in this lesson, we're gonna walk you through both of those methods. And then in the next two lessons, we're actually gonna go through an example of each one of them. So let's kind of take a look here at the two different ways we can estimate bad debt. So in real life, you'll need to estimate what bad debt is. It just doesn't come out of thin air. And so that's what we're doing in this lesson. Now, the two methods that US GAAP prefers and or US GAAP allows and IFRS International Financial Reporting Standards also allow is the first one being the percentage of credit sales and then the second one being the aging of accounts receivable. So those are the two methods that we can use to estimate bad debt from credit sales. Now, the percentage of credit sales is the easiest form of estimating bad debt, and you're gonna see in a minute how easy it is. It's just a calculation. Now, to estimate bad debt using the percentage of credit sales, all you have to do is apply an estimated bad debt percentage by the amount of net credit sales. So we're just taking two numbers, multiplying by that, and that number will give you your bad debt expense and your allowance for uh, bad debt. The result of that multiplication is the amount of bad debt expense for the period. We're done. So once you calculate it, you're done. You can make the journal entry and we go on with our day, okay? Now, to kind of look at it in formula terms, we take credit sales for the month and the net credit sales. So after all the refunds are done, after uh, maybe payments that have been made early. So whatever the net credit sales are, we're gonna multiply it by the bad debt loss rate to get your bad debt expense. Now the bad debt loss rate, um, you're gonna have to calculate, okay? So when we talk about the credit sales, due to practicality, bad debt expense is usually calculated on a per month basis rather than at the time of the sale. In addition, we do not include cash sales, just credit sales. So again, thinking about the problem uh, that you might have to solve, we're looking for uh, the net credit sales, not the total sales, because the total sales may include credit sales and cash sales. So in a problem, they might give you your uh, total sales and then of that total sales, there's cash sales. So then you're gonna have to back out just the credit sales. So we're looking at just the credit sales when calculating this bad debt expense, okay? Then the bad debt loss rate, this rate is based on historical bad debt. So it just, again, doesn't come out of thin air, but sometimes a company might look back three or four years and see uh, what percentage of their receivables have been bad debt, and then use that to calculate a percentage rate. So again, that number just doesn't come out of thin air. There's usually some type of historical information that we can go back to that gives us a rate. Now, if the business is just starting, then sure, we're going to make up that rate. And then over time, we're going to refine it uh, to its actual amount that we we might that's a better use for estimating bad debt. Now, typically using a simple equation such as actual bad debt divided by total credit sales would get you your bad debt loss ratio. So know that just in case a problem doesn't give you a rate, you'll have to calculate that rate yourself. So that is the percentage of credit sales, super easy to do. Once you have all the information, it's just calculating it out and doing the journal entry. The other part here, is, or the other way of calculating estimating a bad debt is the aging of the AR method. This method is more involved and requires more steps. I wouldn't say it's harder. If you understand the steps and how to get to it, it's actually pretty easy. It's just setting it all up that takes a little bit of time. Now, unlike the percentage of credit sales, which focuses on credit sales, which is what we like to call the income statement approach because credit sales is on the income statement, the AR aging or the aging method focuses on the approach on the accounts receivable account, which we call the balance sheet approach. So we're looking at it from the balance sheet side. Let's look at what 
accounts receivable balance is, and then let's create an estimate based on what accounts receivable actually is than what net credit sales is, okay? So this is the balance sheet approach. Again, you can use either one. A lot of companies use this method because it gives us a little bit more accuracy, and you'll see why here when we talk about the different steps. So how do we do the aging of the AR method? Well, the way that we do it is in four steps. Yeah, four steps. The first step here is that we're going to look for the AR aging listing. So uh, the first step is to prepare an AR aging listing, which separates all of the accounts receivable based on the number of days unpaid. So for instance, we might have um, a block of zero to 30, then 31 to 60, then 61 to 90, and then 90 of above. So we take all of our accounts receivable and we plug them in to those different blocks because in step number Two, we are going to prepare a bad debt loss percentage for each category in step number one. So the way that I like to explain this is that what's the likelihood of not collecting a zero to 30 day receivable? Well, it's still within the 30 day, the net 30. So you'll probably collect most of it, if not all of it, right? What's the chances of you collecting something that is 90 days late or really it's 60 days late or over 90? Um, it's probably less likely. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply a greater percentage to the over 90 than we are to the under 30. So we're going to give each one a percentage based on what's the likelihood of that block actually being um, pay, uh, not being paid, and that's how we calculate bad debt expense. So each block is gonna get its own percentage, and again, it comes from historical information on the different blocks, okay? Step number three is we're gonna calculate the total expected allowance for bad debt. We're gonna use the information in step one and two, so we're gonna take step one, multiply it by step two, and that's gonna give us our total expected allowance for bad debt. Now, the key difference here is this is the the amount that we expect to not be paid. So we're going to have to have one more step in which we're going to have to reconcile that with how much do we already have in the allowance for bad debt. So in step number four, we need to calculate bad debt expense. So what we did was we calculated the allowance amount. We didn't calculate the bad debt amount. So if uh, our allowance amount, if we say that our allowance amount should be $1,000, but we already have 500 in that account, then we only need to add $500 of bad debt expense to get it to its $1,000 amount. And again, this will make perfect sense when we go over the example in another lesson. So step number four is we're actually going to calculate the bad debt expense based on how much we how much the allowance should be versus how much it already has. The difference would be the bad debt expense. Now, practicality of using both methods. So most companies actually use both methods, the percentage as well as the AR aging. Now they use the percentage oftentimes for quarterly reports because it's a little bit easier and we can get that dirty calculation done and be done with it. Uh, but at the end of the year on the annual report, you might see companies then switch to the AR aging because it gives a little bit more uh, defined number, a more precise number for that financial statement. So I like to think about the percentage of credit sales as an interim calculation just to get a calculation done and gives us a good ballpark. But then at the end of the year, we want a little bit more precise. So to get it to be a little bit more precise, we use that AR aging. So companies will use both, uh, one for the ease and one for uh, the preciseness to make sure that their financial statements are as precise as possible. So that is a look at estimating bad debt. In the next two lessons, we'll walk you through the calculations of both of them. So until then, we'll see you in the next lesson. Hey guys, if you like this video, make sure you press the like button below. And if you're looking for worksheets that go along with all of these lessons, head over to my website at patrickleemsa.com or click in the link in the far right. And I've got your next lesson right over here. So just click that link and it'll take you to that video. So until then, we'll see you in the next lesson.